Ava Lavinia Gardner, December 24, 1922 – January 25, 1990, was an American actress and singer. She was signed to a contract by MGM Studios in 1941 and appeared mainly in small roles until she drew attention with her performance in The Killers, 1946. She was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actress for her work in Magambo, 1953. She appeared in several high-profile films from the 1950s to 1970s, including The Hucksters, 1947, Showboat, 1951, The Snows of Kilimanjaro, 1952, The Barefoot Contessa, 1954, Bowany Junction, 1956, On the Beach, 1959, 55 Days at Peking, 1963, Seven Days in May, 1964, The Night of the Iguana, 1964, The Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean, 1972, Earthquake, 1974, and The Cassandra Crossing, 1976. Gardner continued to act regularly until 1986, four years before her death in London in 1990 at the age of 67. She is listed 25th among the American Film Institute's 25 Greatest Female Stars of Classic Hollywood Cinema. Early years, Gardner was born near the farming community of Smithfield, North Carolina, the youngest of seven children. She had two brothers, Raymond and Melvin, and four sisters, Beatrice, Elsie May, Inez, and Myra. Her parents, Mary Elizabeth Molly, Nay Baker, and Jonas Bailey Gardner, were poor cotton and tobacco farmers. While there are varying accounts of her background, Gardner's only documented ancestry was English. She was raised in the Baptist faith of her mother. While the children were still young, the Gardners lost their property, forcing Jonas Gardner to work at a sawmill and Molly to begin working as a cook and housekeeper at a dormitory for teachers at the nearby Brogdon School. When Gardner was seven years old, the family decided to try their luck in a larger city, Newport News, Virginia, where Molly Gardner found work managing a boarding house for the city's many ship workers. While in Newport News, Gardner's father became ill and died from bronchitis in 1938, when Ava was 15 years old. After Jonas Gardner's death, the family moved to Rock Ridge near Wilson, North Carolina, where Molly Gardner ran another boarding house for teachers. Gardner attended high school in Rock Ridge and she graduated from there in 1939. She then attended secretarial classes at Atlantic Christian College in Wilson for about a year. Early career, Gardner was visiting her sister Beatrice in New York in 1941 when Beatrice's husband Larry Tarr, a professional photographer, offered to take her portrait. He was so pleased with the results that he displayed the finished product in the front window of his Tarr Photography Studio on Fifth Avenue. A Lowe's Theater's legal clerk, Barnard Duhan, spotted Gardner's photo in Tarr's studio. At the time, Doohan often posed as an MGM talent scout to meet girls, using the fact that MGM was a subsidiary of Lowe's. Doohan entered TARS and tried to get Gardner's number, but was rebuffed by the receptionist. Doohan made the offhand comment, somebody should send her info to MGM, and the TARS did so immediately. Shortly after, Gardner, who at the time was a student at Atlantic Christian College, traveled to New York to be interviewed at MGM's New York office by Al Altman, head of MGM's New York talent department. With cameras rolling, he directed the 18-year-old to walk towards the camera, turn and walk away, then rearrange some flowers in a vase. He did not attempt to record her voice because her southern accent made it almost impossible for him to understand her. Louis B. Mayer, head of the studio, however, sent a telegram to Al, she can't sing, she can't act, she can't talk, she's terrific. She was offered a standard contract by MGM, and left school for Hollywood in 1941 with her sister Beatrice accompanying her. MGM's first order of business was to provide her a speech coach, as her Carolina drawl was nearly incomprehensible to them. Career. After five years of bit parts, mostly at MGM and many of them uncredited, Gardner came to prominence in the Mark Hellinger-produced smash hit film Noir the Killers, 1946, playing the femme fatale Kitty Collins. Other films include The Hucksters, 1947, Showboat, 1951, The Snows of Kilimanjaro, 1952, Lone Star, 1952, Magambo, 1953, The Barefoot Contessa, 1954, Bowany Junction, 1956, The Sun Also Rises, 1957, and On the Beach, 1959. A particularly notable role was in The Barefoot Contessa as the doomed beauty Maria Vargas, a fiercely independent woman who goes from Spanish dancer to international film star with the help of a Hollywood director played by Humphrey Bogart, with tragic consequences. Gardner starred as Guinevere in 1953's Knights of the Round Table, opposite actor Robert Taylor as Sir Lancelot. Indicative of her sophistication, she portrayed a duchess, a baroness and other ladies of royal lineage in her films of the 1950s. Off-camera, she could be witty and pithy, as in her assessment of director John Ford, who directed Magambo, the meanest man on earth, thoroughly evil, adored him. She was billed between Charlton 
Charleston Heston and David Niven in 55 Days at Peking in 1963, which was set in China during the Boxer Rebellion in 1900. The following year, she played her last great leading role in a critically acclaimed film, The Night of the Iguana, 1964, based upon a Tennessee Williams play and starring Richard Burton as an atheist clergyman and Deborah Kerr as a gentle artist traveling with her aged poet grandfather. John Huston directed the movie in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, insisting on making the film in black and white, a decision he later regretted because of the vivid colors of the flora. Gardner received billing below Burton but above Kerr. She was nominated for a BAFTA and a Golden Globe Award for her hearty performance in this signature role. She next appeared again with Burt Lancaster, her co-star from The Killers, this time along with Kirk Douglas and Frederick March, in Seven Days in May, 1964, a taut thriller about an attempted military takeover of the U.S. government. Gardner plays a former love interest of Lancaster's who now may be instrumental in Douglas's preventing a coup against the President of the United States. Two years later, in 1966, Gardner briefly sought the role of Mrs. Robinson in Mike Nichols' The Graduate, 1967. She reportedly called Nichols and said, I want to see you. I want to talk about this graduate thing. Nichols never seriously considered her for the part, preferring to cast a younger woman. Anne Bancroft was 36 while Gardner was 43, but he did visit her hotel, where he later recounted that she sat at a little French desk with a telephone. She went through every movie star cliché. She said, All right, let's talk about your movie. First of all, I strip for nobody. Gardner moved to London in 1968, undergoing an elective hysterectomy to allay her worries of contracting the uterine cancer that had claimed the life of her mother. That year, she made what some consider to be one of her best films, Mayerling, in which she played the supporting role of Austrian Empress Elizabeth of Austria opposite James Mason as Emperor Franz Joseph I. She appeared in a number of disaster films throughout the 1970s, notably Earthquake, 1974, with Heston, The Cassandra Crossing, 1976, with Lancaster, and the Canadian movie City on Fire, 1979. She appeared briefly as Lily Langtree at the end of The Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean, 1972, and in The Blue Bird, 1976. Her last movie was Regina Roma, 1982, a direct-to-video release. In the 1980s she acted primarily on television, including the miniseries remake of The Long, Hot Summer and in a story arc on Knott's Landing, both 1985. Personal Life, Marriages Soon after her arrival in Los Angeles, Gardner met fellow MGM contract player Mickey Rooney. They married on January 10, 1942, when she was 19 years old and he was 21. The ceremony was held in the remote town of Ballard, California, because MGM studio head Louis B. Mayer was worried that fans would desert Rooney's Andy Hardy movie series if it became known that their star was married, largely due to Rooney's serial adultery. Gardner divorced him in 1943, but agreed not to reveal the cause so as not to affect his career. Gardner's second marriage was brief as well, to jazz musician and bandleader Artie Shaw, from 1945 to 1946. Shaw had previously been married to Lana Turner. Gardner's third and last marriage was to singer and actor Frank Sinatra, from 1951 to 1957. She would later say in her autobiography that he was the love of her life. Sinatra left his wife, Nancy, for Gardner and their subsequent marriage made headlines. Lines. Sinatra was blasted by gossip columnists Hedda Hopper and Luella Parsons, the Hollywood establishment, the Roman Catholic Church, and by his fans for leaving his wife for a noted femme fatale. Gardner used her considerable influence, particularly with Harry Cohn, to get Sinatra cast in his Oscar-winning role in From Here to Eternity, 1953. That role and the award revitalized both Sinatra's acting and singing careers. The Gardner-Sinatra marriage was tumultuous. Gardner confided to Artie Shaw, her second husband, that, with him Frank it's impossible, it's like being with a woman, he's so gentle, it's as though he thinks I'll break, as though I'm a piece of Dresden China and he's gonna hurt me. During their marriage Gardner became pregnant twice, but aborted both pregnancies. MGM had all sorts of penalty clauses about their stars having babies, she said. She said years later, we couldn't even take care of ourselves. How were we going to take care of a baby? Gardner remained good friends with Sinatra for the remainder of her life. Relationship. Gardner became a friend of businessman and aviator Howard Hughes in the early to mid-1940s, and the relationship lasted into the 1950s. Gardner stated in her autobiography, Ava, My Story, that she was never in love with Howard Hughes, but he was in and out of her life for about 20 years. Huggess's trust in Gardner was what kept their relationship alive. She describes him as painfully shy, completely enigmatic and more eccentric, than anyone she had ever met. After Gardner divorced Sinatra in 1957, she headed for Spain, where she 
began a friendship with writer Ernest Hemingway, she had starred in his The Sun Also Rises that year, and several years earlier, Hemingway had successfully urged producer Darrell F. Zanuck to cast Gardner in The Snows of Kilimanjaro, a film which adapted several of his short stories. While staying with Hemingway at his villa in San Francisco de Paula in Havana, Cuba, Gardner once swam alone without a swimsuit in his pool. After watching her, Hemingway ordered to his staff, the water is not to be emptied. Her friendship with Hemingway led to her becoming a fan of bullfighting and bullfighters, such as Luis Miguel Dominguez, who became her lover. It was a sort of madness, honey, she later said of the time. Gardner was also involved in a relationship with her live-in boyfriend and companion, American actor Benjamin Tatar, who worked in Spain as a foreign language dubbing director. Tatar later wrote an autobiography in which he discussed his relationship with Gardner, though the book was never published. Death After a lifetime of smoking, Gardner suffered from emphysema, as well as an unidentified autoimmune disorder. Two strokes in 1986 left her partially paralyzed and bedridden. Although Gardner could afford her medical expenses, Sinatra wanted to pay for her visit to a specialist in the United States, and she allowed him to make the arrangements for a medically staffed private plane. She suffered a bad fall a week before she died, and she lay on the floor, alone and unable to move, until her housekeeper returned. Her last words, to her housekeeper, were reportedly I'm so tired. She died of pneumonia at the age of 67, at her London home, 34 Ennismore Gardens, where she had lived since 1968. Gardner was buried in the Sunset Memorial Park, Smithfield, North Carolina, next to her brothers and their parents, Jonas (1878–1938) and Molly Gardner (1883–1943). The town of Smithfield now has a Ava Gardner Museum. Book in the last years of her life, Gardner asked Peter Evans to ghostwrite her autobiography, stating, "I either write the book or sell the jewels." Despite meeting with Evans frequently and approving of most of his copy. Gardner eventually learned that Evans, along with the BBC, had once been sued by her ex-husband Frank Sinatra. Gardner and Evans's friendship subsequently cooled and Evans left the project. Evans's notes and sections of his draft of Gardner's autobiography, which he based on their taped conversations, were published in the book Ava Gardner, The Secret Conversations After Evans's Death in 2012. Award Nominations Gardner was nominated for an Academy Award for Magambo, 1953. The award was won by Audrey Hepburn for Roman Holiday. Her her performance as Maxine Falk in The Night of the Iguana, 1964, was well-reviewed, and she was nominated for a BAFTA Award and a Golden Globe. Additionally, Ava Gardner won the 1964 Prize San Sebastian for Best Actress for her performance in The Night of the Iguana. Film Portrayals Gardner has been portrayed by Marcia Gay Harden in the 1992 TV miniseries Sinatra, Deborah Kara Unger in HBO's 1998 television movie The Rat Pack, Kate Beckinsale in the 2004 Howard Hughes biopic The Aviator, and Anna Driever in the 2012 Italian TV film Walter Chiari, Fino all'ultima Rosada. Strangely for a Martin Scorsese film, The Aviator commits a mistake by showing Hughes escorting her to the premiere of the 1939 movie The Women, a full two years before she even arrived in Hollywood. Gardner's image appeared on the cover of Robin Gibbs' 1983 album How Old Are You, along with Clark Gable's filmography.